Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's really good to have you with us tonight. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about Horatio, which is a European mental health conference. Um, and we're looking at um, all the different aspects of that. We're joined by some fantastic guests and we'd really love to hear what you think and for you to ask questions. So to enable you to do that, I'll just hand over now to Vanessa so she can tell you how you can join in. Vanessa? Yeah, thank you, Nikki. Hi, everyone. Looking forward to tonight's session. Um, we'd love it if you could join in online and ask questions and just generally join the conversation. You can do that in one of two ways. You can either go on to Facebook and you need to like the Unite MHNA Facebook page and you'll see the live stream pop up there. Um, I'll keep an eye on that. So if you've got any questions, put them in the box and we'll feed them back to our panel. If you prefer Twitter, if you just follow the hashtag MHTV and you'll see the conversation there. And again, you know, ask us questions, conversation, and um, I'll be keeping an eye on Twitter as well. Thank you. Lovely. So let's introduce you to our guests then. First, Nina, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, thank you. Um, I'm very, very happy to be here, first of all. So um, my name is Nina Tukwai, I'm a president of Horatio, the European Psychiatric Neurosis Organization. And that's actually my hobby. So my daily work is as a principal lecturer in mental health and substance abuse care here in Finland and from the University of Applied Sciences. I also work with the families and couples and do a lot of kind of international cooperation and many, many things like I think most of us are doing actually so yeah so maybe um, maybe later on there is time to tell us something about the new activities and so on but that's the kind of main things about me at the moment. Fantastic. Ashley? Thank you and again like Nina um, greetings to colleagues um, Ashley Culhane is my name and like Nina I'm very happy to join you this evening uh, for our colleagues. Um, I based um, in the Psychiatric Nurses Association is my real job, which is a trade union in Ireland. Um, I like to say that we're a boutique sized trade union because we yeah. represent the uh, profession of psychiatric nursing, mostly of which we have about 5000 members. Um, and that's the daytime job. My post there is a policy advisor and um, amongst other things uh, from policy, education and sometimes um, in relations matters but um for the purposes of today i'm joining you as general secretary of horatio um i joined the board of horatio european psychiatric nursing uh, almost seven years ago um and nina also was on the board at that point so it was lovely to have a familiar face um and my i have been working in the field of mental health over 25 years my clinical background was um, in adult uh, mental health, but also child and adolescent mental health. In actual fact, I started my career as a Montessori teacher and moved to psychiatric mental health nursing from yeah. there. So it's been quite a, a diverse um, journey. But I think that's probably the one thing you can say about nursing is you find yourself in mm -hmm. all sorts of diverse pathways um, from, as I say, starting as a Montessori teacher to mental health nursing to child and adolescent mental health, adult mental health to industrial relations to Horatio and here tonight with you. So um, thank you. Fantastic. So let's just start by just describing actually what Horatio is for somebody perhaps who's never heard of it before. Mm. Yeah. So that's a that's that's a pity if someone hasn't heard about us, but maybe it's time then. So um, Horatio is actually kind of a European roof organization for the national members. So or we are representing 20, 21 member countries in European level. So um, the kind of a starting point of Horatio has been 2006. There were, there were 2005, there were a couple of psychiatric nurses talking to each other and saying that there should be something something European also for nurses and mental health nurses in that sense that the there are many tables in Europe that your voice is not heard if you don't have some kind of association or organization behind you. So 2006, they started as a psychiatric nursing working group. And maybe some of our listeners are actually been there or kind of at least heard from that one. But it very quickly after one year it turned out as an association. And, and so so we have been around for quite a while time. So it's a 15 years or a little bit more even so it's uh, we have kind of a grown and developed the, the thing 
um, quite recently, quite much also with the international organizations and so on. So on. I think nowadays we are more known, at least in European level, that we have never been before. Okay. But there is still work to do. But uh, so we are not kind of directly representing individual mental health nurses, but we are representing the associates of the mental health nurses or the, or the psychiatric nurses. So that's our role. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Ash wants to add something um, on that one. Well, like I guess um, as Nina pointed out, we was we around um while we we grew slowly incrementally because this is um the executive and the board of Horatio does you know oversees in its own time in free time it's voluntary so um mm -hmm. you know things can be a little bit slow when you're doing a few jobs at the same time and I'm from Ireland Nina's from Finland we've colleagues from Fer the Faroe Islands Czech Republic Germany, Malta, and Sweden, and that's the the board of Horatio. Um, and like most organisations, possibly a bit like your own, the board is elected and it holds its tenure, you know, over a three year period, you know. And our general assembly, which is election process, is held usually every year. If we're not in the pandemic or COVID, but it it allows for throughput and for and um, for those colleagues, including yourselves, um, who wish to be nominated by their member organization onto the board and they're elected therein, just like in any um, annual delegate conference, I suppose, you know, so it kind of adheres to those kind of principles, really, in terms of um, election and the nomination process coming from the member organization. So as Nina says, Whilst we are an umbrella roof organization, we do so, um, so we support member organizations in their um, goals and objectives or campaigns or issues. And we're not the direct negotiator in a country per se. We support colleagues who may have, um, you know, new projects or issues they may wish to learn from other colleagues. So that's where a conduit in a way, you know, sometimes. Um, so yeah, I think that's the, the spirit of it. So it makes it for very colourful. It makes it quite um, interesting in terms of um, characters, personalities, countries, cultures, different approaches. So um, that's certainly the attraction of the organisation, apart from the, the the day job, if you like, because it's um, it's eclectic bunch for sure, and um, and there are so many things to learn from one another. And I interestingly was very lucky in that. The first conference, we'll call it a conference, it was a gathering really, was held in Arnhem in 2007, um, where, where people put out, where the individuals at that time put out and said, we're having a conference. They weren't even sure what they were really having. I think it was a meeting <laughs> and it was to get like-minded people in a room in Arnhem in Holland. Um, and so uh, some of us showed up there and here we are since, I suppose. But um, um a movement, I suppose, really. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I mean, you've talked about the diversity of, of your of the, of the group. Why do you think it's so important, particularly for sort of mental health or psychiatric nurses, to have that kind of cross boundary talk? Why do you think that space is so important? Mm -hmm. So, um, even though when we are coming from different countries, so I think one of one of the things that can connects us is that we are talking about mental health. <laughs> so we have a common interest and. Uh, also, they are um, because we are presenting, unfortunately, yet the whole Europe, but there, there is around 50 countries in Europe. So, the diversity is actually it's huge and it's huge in services, it's huge in education systems. And I think actually it should be because we have very different backgrounds in different countries. There are historical reasons, there are political reasons, several other issues that are affecting how, how we are kind of working in our education. And so. But then there is this common interest, and it brings people together to be able to, to share ideas and, and also to hear how we're doing and how are we doing and kind of share the experience that there, there is no need to reinvent the wheel every time. But also to hear sometimes that, that actually we have done good. So that it's very important also for nurses, professionals to yeah. hear, hear that, okay, it's not so bad in our country, even it's... Uh, Sometimes, you know, we are we are very good in complaining, 
and, and there are reasons to complain, I don't say that, but it's also very kind of empowering also to meet people uh, from different countries and, and share, the, uh, share the ideas. Of course, we can say that it would be very, very important, and it is really important to have also interdisciplinary approaches so that we are not kind of putting ourselves in a vacuum as mental health nurses. But there are some differences even between the professionals. So there's very, very important for the, for the professional identity also to hear what, what is happening in different countries and, and to learn and kind of uh, uh, actually, we can use this very nice word, which is a little bit old fashioned, this professional growth, but it's also very, very important from that viewpoint. So I think it, it's a it's a, to share something, but also to have the, the idea of the diversity at the same time. So that's really important. And it's also important that we are not staying only in our own countries and thinking that we can do everything and we don't need the others. There is a need for more and more cooperation between the countries and, and professions and disciplines and so on. So it's a both ways at the same time. Mm. I think I'm, I've been to Horatio and for me, what I found really interesting was the fact that nobody's got this right. There's so much to learn. So even if you are in an area where you have some real strengths in your practice and there are, you know, you're getting feedback from service users that says you're doing the right things, everybody is doing at least one thing right, that you can pull that information. I find that really exciting to hear what mm. other people are doing and also what their working conditions are like as well, for good and bad. So you're going to learn from that. Actually, yeah. was there anything you wanted to add to that? Well, um, I think uh, I kind of alluded to as I was introducing myself, but, you know, if I go back to the profession of nurse and just for this particular comment, not that I want to exclude other disciplines or colleagues mm. or those service users and families that cares, but if we look at nursing per se and even the makeup of individuals who come to Horatio conferences, etc., we have educators, we have clinicians, we have managers, we have uh, people like ourselves who work for uh, organisations professionally. You know, nursing of itself is so diverse in terms of our background. You can look at that. And then, of course, mental health, it's mm -hmm. diverse again. So it's layer upon layer of diversity. And in that, there's boundaries. And then, of course, there's commonality. And that's why it is so important to look at, you know, a, a way of bringing that kind of knowledge and diversity together um, and even I suppose that was kind of in the background of the individuals mm. who set about setting up such an organization but it's a bit like projects you start you don't really know what you're getting into till you're in it and then you realize wow look at this there's people here from you know from all over to the point that um colleagues in Canada and of Australia have jo yeah. joined us even though we're European you know so it's not that 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 doesn't matter you know it, it's about just bringing voice and you know um, uh, enabling that voice to get out there because we do know mental health in many ways can can sometimes be left a little bit to the side in terms of the global context of health it's safe yeah. it's not that I don't want to dwell on that but it's, it's stated mm. in every report we look at you know that uh, I think it's you know, if anything, the pandemic highlights the fact, albeit somewhat late, that, uh, you know, mental health is hugely important in our daily lives. And whilst, yes, we have a public health emergency and yes, we have to, you know, deal with vaccinations, etc. We also need to mind our mental health. And um, and as we probably knew this, all of us on this call and, and colleagues tuning in this evening, I'm not so sure everybody else quite gets it, you know, so I'm not sure you knew what you were getting into is it in it and then it's like right what's our next move you know so mm -hmm. um I think that's why you know if, if anything we've learned in the last two years that piece about collegiality collaboration diversity you know we missed it so much and we need to you know hold it and embrace it and keep it going as much as we can if in terms of the whole spirit of, you know, health and mental health and well-being, um, and obviously the professions where we fit into. It's interesting, isn't it? Because I think the more you talk to people from different backgrounds and different countries and different circumstances, you come across pe people who are working in really challenging conditions, where, the, where you know, most of the authorities don't even really 
think about it. It's not that they're discriminating against mental health. They don't ever think about it really at all. But one of the things the pandemic has done and the impact of that has really forced people to think about what happens when people are extremely sad or lonely or what happens when people's living conditions affect their well-being in a, in a really holistic sense. And there's if you're just looking at something biomedical, can't really give you any of the answers to that. And that's where I think mental health has come alive again, really. Mm. Yeah. And for the clinicians in, in health workers, I mean, we are so aware of, you know, the fatigue that's out there in, in health services, and I include mental health in that, but, you know, workers' mental health has been seriously challenged like in never in a way that has never been before whatever your front line might be you know and there's a the, the jury's out as to what the front line is but I suppose we're speaking from a mental health nursing perspective but across all healthcare professionals this has been a hugely challenging time so it is a piece about that you know in terms of um holding that kind of um in our minds and it it is a cross-cutting kind of living thing really you know um you know this these these last while has changed every few months things have changed differently for us um, and actually i remember when we were in prague which we can speak to in a little bit recently we had our general assembly in prague um in the czech republic and actually vanessa joined us and she was she gave us an interesting analogy in terms of her pathway to mental health nursing and it's that richness of where life experience brought us to these roles, you know, nurtures the conversation along and gives us that kind of grounding when um, when we're, we're when we ask ourselves the questions, what we're doing every day, you know. Yeah. yeah. I've got the first couple of questions in, if that's mm. the first one is why is it called Horatio? Which is a good question. <laughs> and the second is they're they're mentioning the dreaded B word already. Um are, are British nurses allowed in after Brexit? <laughs> okay. Harsh, but well done for getting it out there. Yeah. yeah. So why so, Horatio? Why is it called why, Horatio? Why Horatio? So um, Horatio is actually, if you Google Horatio, you end up to that uh, popular TV serial with Horatio saying something. But anyway, Horatio is actually coming from Hamlet. So it's a it's a kind of a supportive figure of Hamlet and a kind of a his a company or a kind of a when he was in need of someone. So Horatio was there for Hamlet. So that's a kind of a short version of that story. I'm not UK person, so you probably know Shakespeare, but I'm much much better than me. But anyway, so mm. it's coming from there. <laughs> Don't test us. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but that makes comes, sense. Yeah, but it comes also with the question, the other question that I have come across quite often in different uh, in different meetings, and especially for some reason, quite often by with the, in meetings with psychiatrists. So they are saying that, you know, while you are representing European psychiatric nursing organization, why you are talking about mental health nurses? And I, I think this this is also the, something that comes with the time. So. So we are more and more talking about mental health nurses and not psychiatric nurses. But again, if we look that in the European perspective, so the, the, the map of terms is very different in different mm. countries. So, uh, but I think if Horatio would start today, I think we would sit down and think about a little bit you know, more carefully, maybe with the wiseness we have now. So is it the psychiatric or mental health nurses or both, or what, what is the actual the kind of official name of the, of the organization? But anyway, uh, Horatio, that's, um, that, that has been a figure in, in Hamlet's narratives and there, that's the place where it comes from. I think it was actually one of the founders from Netherlands who came across with that name. And they try to avoid, you know, the different kind of abbreviations that you see in a European level, but no one actually knows what those small letters or big letters mean. So that Horatio is at least something that we can remember because it's so odd in that sense in the European level. I like the fact that it's a name as well, a name of a person with a role and there's a story there. And I think that's a lot more sort of mental health nursing, isn't it? Mm, this idea yeah. that personhood is important, mm -hmm. that names are important, that 
the roles of people and the, the role of someone who's a helper not necessarily a professional helper but someone who wants to wants to support you that's that's i think it's actually a really smart name mm. yeah yeah it is and i asked the first time i actually knew what it actually was myself so mm. <laughs> so educational okay. um the next thing is the brexit question mm. i mean vanessa's been so obviously you're still letting people in <laughs> <What's> the situation <laughs> Only just. <laughs> well, the last time I checked, Great Britain was in the continent of Europe. So I mean, you know, <laughs> that's mm-hmm. that's uh, it depends on what you're describing as Europe, I guess. Really, mm-hmm. is it by location or you know in the European Union? So oh, I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I don't think there's a problem there at all, actually, because um, it it really is in terms of what we laid out at the start the purpose remains regardless of whether you're in Mm -hmm. Finland Great Britain Ukraine Switzerland you Mm -hmm. know it doesn't really matter what Mm -hmm. we're trying to do is achieve a common kind of collaboration and you know you know uh, discussion in terms of psychiatric mental health nursing and um Nina's right in terms of uh, even the name the title psychiatric mental health nursing like for instance I I I'm on the register here in Ireland as a psychiatric nurse. Mm-hmm. That's the title because the registration and the regulator here, um, if I was working in uh, with children and I was on the registration here, I'd be a registered children's nurse mm-hmm. in Ireland. I'm a registered psychiatric nurse. And, and funnily enough, it has come up regularly in this jurisdiction as to whether we should be psychiatric nurses or mental health nurses. But as a good trade union official that has to go out to consultation to the 4,800 psychiatric mental health nurses in the country and they need to decide what they want to be called so you know even in this small island we're not you know there is that kind of you know you need to consult and what it is obviously psychiatry you know it comes with a little bit of burdening names sometimes I'm not sure you know everybody has a different opinion on this so we we embrace everybody to answer the Brexit question mm-hmm. and um and look forward to colleagues and Vanessa and Nikki yourself you've been at Horacea conferences yeah you, you know as I mentioned colleagues from Canada come regularly they're not in Europe but you know <laughs> they add and very much form part of our discussion so you know that's that's the point but the the genesis of where Horatio came was to try and provide a voice at the table in Europe and that's why mm-hmm. it's you know it kind of grounds itself and is recognized by mm-hmm. European um, organizations in that space. Mm-hmm. 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 Are there any, so, anything you want to ask Vanessa particularly? Yeah I think not really a question but a reflection I think for me you know first of all you know coming to Horatio in Prague it was um, it was exciting because um, I've been you know stuck in England since before COVID. It was the first time I'd got on a plane again, so just kind of being connected beyond you know on a personal level beyond my own environment was great, and I think I really appreciated it because I haven't done that for a few years and maybe I took that for granted before. And then I think secondly, you know, I've always said that I'm part of Europe and and part of the world, really, that I don't just belong to the country that I live in. So for me, um, as you've already articulated, really feeling connected to sort of a European community of of mental health nurses, you know, was that, you know, I I loved it. And I think as well for me that I've always um, sat more on the social side of of mental health nursing. and I'd like to think that I operate more from a social model. And I think being in Prague made me kind of appreciate the sort of social political context that we all operate in and how it impacts. So although I've talked about those things, I think actually being in a different European city um, makes you reflect on that and appreciate, you know, how some of the differences between the way they practice um, in the Czech Republic, for example, are influenced by history and politics and the sort of social environment. So I thought that was really good. I don't know um, if, if you've heard some reflections before, but I think that's kind of, for me, what really struck me. And then, you know, being able to stay in touch with people after Horatio has been brilliant. Um, and I guess that's due to the magic of social media, to be fair, but yeah. Mm. So. so just as a, as a question, what happens at conference what happens at Horatio conference and is there anything particular that's coming up so that people who are um listening at home who might want to look up the the website and actually think about maybe getting themselves sorted out for next year's 
Mm, okay, so so the conference is, is one activity of ours. So it's a, it's a big one for us also. And uh, we have been very, very sorry about the COVID time and needed to postpone. We, we already have a very well planned conference in Berlin and that needed to be cancelled and so on. So it was really good to hear your experiences, Anissa, because it was also. It was a little bit exciting also for us because that wasn't the conference, it was the, the members meeting and mm. then for the members. So uh, normally if we are not in the middle of pandemic, so we have every other year there is a conference and every other year there is a festival. And the festival mm -hmm. is bigger, it's one day longer than the Congress and there is always a scientific program. But there mm -hmm. are also other programs included, and especially in festivals, there are more like social programs and some cultural issues and those kind of things yes, that we yes. try to include there. So uh, 2019, we had the previous festival, but that, that was the last one after the, uh, before the pandemic started. So that was in Copenhagen, and it was about participation and collaboration, and we have a very strong uh, representatives from uh, different um, uh, service user groups and, and from these different services and and that was really collaborative conference so people are kind of are missing that one too because of course that's mm -hmm. long time ago now and, and and the next one will be now in Malta in March so if you go to the Horatio website so you already find the the information that's available there and it's the 13th and 14th of March in Malta you can already send an abstract in if you like, but everyone is welcome. So you don't think that you should be able to present something. We will be very happy to, to take in as many abstracts, which are good ones as possible. But, but you can come also just meet people and hear and listen and also hopefully have some time to see also some projects from Malta. But that's, that's the difference. So it's a conference or festival, and that's a kind of... Um, they, they are big events in many ways, but uh, I think if we if we are able to keep up with that kind of a, um, atmosphere that people really like to be there and, and it's kind of a not family gathering, but maybe a gathering of relatives or something. So, <laughs> so it's a, uh, I think that's the best kind of a feedback that we can have in that sense. And then and it's not only, you know, the the actual facts that you get from different presentations, but it's also yeah. to be able to share your ideas and network and, and meet people and just to be mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So yeah, that's definitely. the best way to feedback for us too. So well, I think for people who've never been to a conference before, particularly a mental health or psychiatric conference, and they're worried, this is a really great conference to go to. It's very friendly, it's very okay. welcoming. Um, there's a standard, obviously, that's expected. But if you're here to talk about something interesting, people will help you to do that. It's not, um, I think some of the research um, conferences can be a little mm, intimidating, ah. a little harsh in their feedback, whereas that's not the case for um, for this conference. It's a very, very warm, friendly conference. And also Malta in March, not a bad option, is it, in terms of weather? <laughs> If you're just getting yeah. ready for a bit of international travel again, it's a really good option. Mm -hmm. I agree. And there's sort of a social element as well, because yeah. I think a lot of the learning goes on during the social conversations, doesn't it? After yeah. and between the meeting, that kind of networking with mm. people that you wouldn't usually have the opportunity mm. to meet or, or talk to. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, for me, that was quite powerful. Mm. Mm. It's always nice, I think, to be around other nurses, but to be around mental health yeah. and psychiatric nurses has a different flavour to it. Definitely. Everybody's very easy to chat to. Yeah. Like, if you go to, I don't know if anyone else found this nursing conferences, but if you go to the loo, a nursing conference, because everyone's doing their kind of hand washing to the ninth degree because they know other nurses are watching them, you're there for hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a lot more sensible. Yeah. <laughs> I find that uh, the pressure to sing a song can be sometimes a little bit overwhelming afterwards. <laughs> it, um, there is that part to it, uh, and it, um, and it and it's meant to the best possible um, enjoyment. But um, yes, if they can drag the likes of me up to sing a song, or Nina, they can do anything. So uh, bring your gargoyle. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the social part. Mm, yeah, it's great. Mm, definitely, definitely. So what's coming up? So you've described, uh, you know, the history, you've looked at, you know, what happens generally. So where, do you, where would you like to see this go? Because it's growing by the look of it. Mm. 
be able to start at? Um, well, I suppose I referenced the point that um, we as a group of people, you know, we change because we're bored, um, actually. So it's not always the same people coming up with the ideas, which brings mm. um, different dimensions to the work we do. Um, we tend to take on a limited number projects in that role that not to overwhelm ourselves and the day for the job in that um actually quite recently i was on a call with mental health europe who are looking at a co-production task force for instance um and they're they're looking at that whole piece across europe and um, have engaged with various organization ngos advocacy groups and indeed ourselves as a professional group to look at that whole piece about co-producing you know there's there's a narrative around that too and they're exploring that as uh, one of their strategic pillars for Europe um, and their role therein so we would see ourselves um, you know gathering information on behalf of our members feeding that back to the advocacy organization which is of course mental health Europe so that's for instance one project that's just started um, and it'd be quite interesting that'll run over two or three years actually I believe I can't remember the two or three years but um, it's just kicked off anyway that's something I was involved in and um, Nina can speak for herself and something that she's involved in and then we have other pieces of information you know other uh, projects which we have looked at for instance our colleagues in the Czech Republic asked to ACO2 and make comment in terms of their reform because they've had a big reform going on there which is some of mm. which was great to see when we went to Prague in terms yeah. of this initiative which I believe has gone on about six or seven years at this stage and uh, in that space Horatio would have um, contributed to matters relating to curricula in terms of community mental health nursing and what that would look like and um, they would have contributed into matters relating to policy and nurses role therein in terms of various settings community hospital outreach day hospital because as as we pointed out earlier, countries come from different standpoints and where they are in delivering mental health policy. Mm -hmm. um, some come from a position that, uh, for instance, in this country, we'd have come from a position in the 80s, closing psychiatric institutions, moving on. Mm -hmm. Might have got stuck in the middle, perhaps, I would say, and then moving towards community. Uh, Czech Republic is coming from a straight leap out of from a hospital environment into communities. They're in a different space, different tempo, different approach. But there's such advantage in that, too, because the experience of other countries or indeed curricula developed to empower nurses and support them in that is much more advanced than, for instance, what I would have experienced uh, as a nurse in the late 90s here. So, the, you know, that that's the pros and cons of all of these things. But that's just a little flavor of other issues. There's two projects Nina's working on. I'll let her speak to those at the minute. Um, and we also have supported Belgium, for instance, also. That's another country which have been looking at their, I suppose, professional organisation, which is a different matter altogether. That's in terms of representation within the country. Um, so, yeah, you kind of, you, you have to keep, what's the phrase? You have to keep on your toes. Our members keep us on our toes because we can move from various different subject matter, really. Um, and um, it's interesting to see that, you know, um, but Nina, do you want to mention the two of the projects that you're working on? One just recently and one nearly finishing, yeah. I think. Yeah, and also that um, during the year, so we have been in, um, participating in different also EU-based platforms for depression and so on. So we have been also, like you mentioned, asked uh, Mental Health Europe, so we have been collaborating and are collaborating with Canadian and also the EU Family, the family Association in European level. Uh, so there are things going on and kind of we uh, kind of agreements to support each other and so on. So even though we are not members like we are in member of Europe, but then we have um, then we have um, more and more cooperation with ICN, the International Council of Nurses, and we will have a workshop now in Dublin in the APN conference late August. So that's a kind of pre-workshop in that sense that the the real conference will they kick off next day or something like that. So that's very interesting to have a workshop there on advanced level of mental health nursing. Mm. Uh, we are actually, actually preparing that book 
Kafka uh, of advanced practice in mental health medicine, European approach, which will be published later this autumn. And, and we will hold a webinar by Horatio and Springer to, to launch the book and kind of a, um, make it available also for so many people as possible. So that will be also an e-book at the same time. So that's been a real effort from, from the couple of us uh, for the almost two years time now. So there have been Professor Agnes Higgins, me and um, Associate Professor Gislikot Christopherson from Iceland. So we are editing that book and being you know, authors also in many of those chapters with our European colleagues. And we are very happy that also our European colleagues have provided case examples in that book. So we are, have a kind of diversity of, of different countries included there. Um, and then, um, then there is this new kind of new uh, mental health nursing work group in IC and that we are also participating. So we are we have been kind of uh, um, enabling a questionnaire throughout Europe for mental health nurses and those kind of things helping also the IC and the gather the data. That will be helpful also for us in that sense that we got the overall picture. WHO uh, is strongly uh, supporting nowadays human rights based. Uh, approach and also the community based approach, like as was mentioned, uh, for example, in just the topic. So, uh, we are we have just kind of a, agreed a collaboration between the WHO quality rights e training program and, and Horatio. So, we will have links to their materials and, and so on. So, we will try to endorse that one also for, for public because there's a huge aim by WHO to reach 5 million people with that training program to spread the ideas and the approach of human rights in mental health settings. Mm. And then uh, we are now also a member in, in the Pan-European Mental Health Coalition in WHO. So we will see what that bring in the, brings in the future. So it's a uh, we are new member there, so we will see. It's been a, quite much of correspondence at least already, so <laughs> we will see how much work we can promise to do. But so there is a kind of this kind of international and European level activities, and but we don't want to work only on that level. We want also to have the events of Horatio and to remember for whom we are. So it's not only kind of policy making, but those things are actually very important because nurses very. are not very visible there. Yeah, so definitely. We, we hope that we can bring in the mental health nurses' voice, and 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 we have we have been very welcomed actually. So it's also very nice to be there. That's mm. fantastic news. Yeah. I can see time's getting on with us a bit, but we've got a couple of questions that have come in. So I'll just go to yeah. Vanessa for those. Yeah. So the fair. Uh, drum roll here <laughs> <laughs> the first question is <clears throat> what are the similarities and differences in mental health it's a big question this and mental health nursing? that's the first part what is the question specific? yeah yeah big yeah. question yeah mm. if i were to take it broadly just to go quickly and anita can add to it or we can come back to it but i mean educational approaches in terms of how nurses um are educated which i touched on when i mentioned um our cooperation with czech republic in terms of curricula and training there would be different differences in the facilities in which we deliver that care and the approaches therein so uh, if we were considering the role of the state or government in providing services vis-a-vis -vis an insurance Service, mm. service, which is in some. If we look at indeed municipalities delivering mental health services, which may not, not necessarily be health driven, if we look at it, you know, is delivered in so many different types of ways and approaches, not least, of course, then if we consider it in terms of what is primary care versus secondary and tertiary care what's that look like that that has a different answer in every country you know so um it could be the same but it's not quite the same and then of course we have nurses delivering care in correctional facilities forensic services and um, you know myself and Nina were having a conversation earlier about 
uh, mental health nursing and addictions, which happens yeah. in some jurisdictions and doesn't in others. And um, I was having a conversation also in terms of working with colleagues um, with intellectual disability nursing is what we call it here in Ireland. I believe you call it learning disability nursing in the UK mm -hmm. um, and where colleagues, where individuals who are trying to access the service may have a learning disability with a mental health component to that and which service do I fit in or don't, as the case may be. So really, I mean, it's a, I, we could go on <laughs> how long would we go, but it, uh, mm -hmm. Whilst that is great and it's eclectic, it does present its challenges when we try to get a fix. And I mean that in a, very, a fix on matters from a European perspective. It can make it challenging. Yeah. In the advanced level, uh, we come across uh, huge differences between countries because not all, in all European countries, there is not the master's level education for mental health nurses. So there might not be kind of advanced level in that sense. I'm not going to the terms of nurse practitioner or advanced practice nurses or whatever, because that's a that's a jungle actually if we can mm. especially with states. But uh, uh, one of the things that in the advanced level seems to be a kind of a um, differentiation of different countries is the prescribing, and 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 uh, it's very very different kind of models or or if that's existing or how this affects the system in different countries. But then we also, if I say, we may say that we, we were starting to be a little bit worried while we were kind of listening and reading. And, and so um, there are so much talk about interventions, you know, today. And, and then we started to think, so what is actually mental health nursing? And when we are talking advanced level mental health nursing, so there is a kind of a risk that we are losing the, the real thing, and that's the therapeutic audience. And mm -hmm. if we kind of lose that, so we, we are just kind of uh, conducting interventions and evaluating interventions or impacts or efficacy or something like that. So uh, I hope that that's the similarity between mm -hmm. all the countries and between all the mental health nurses, that we are not losing that core even though we might have, like uh, Ash was uh, describing the, the huge differences we have, but that, that's the thing that we should be remembering and kind of nourishing actually in different countries. But yeah. uh, otherwise, the, the, also the education systems are very different, and it, of course there are many reasons for that. There's yeah. also differences between countries in Europe in that sense that at what age you can enter the nursing education. And that's also something that is different, for example, in Germany and Austria and with some other European countries. So it comes also to the new directives and on, on those discussions. Yeah. One of the things that struck me when I was in Prague was when we visited the um, mental health services as part of the, the, um, the meeting. And um, even though services are configured differently over there, so for example, they've still got um, institutional care, uh, people are staying in hospital for, still for many years, although they're obviously going through a process of deinstitutionalization. Um, <clears throat> it's the same questions about, you know, care closer to home, care in hospital, least restrictive environment. And, and also it made me reflect, having worked in institutions in England, um, 10, 15 years ago, um, we all thought that it was kind of the, the silver bullet. Once the hospitals closed, um, everything would be great. And of course, things are still very complicated. There's all kinds of issues about it. Um, certainly, you know, working in, I work in the prison system, um, health and justice, and, you know, we certainly see people that in the past would be in hospital. So I think for me, that was a really interesting kind of realisation that although they're in different places, um, it's the same debates. And the other thing for me was um, their mental health nursing values are really strong. So the, the, the staff that I spoke to who are mental health nurses in Bag, I would say we all had exactly the same values about people. Um, and also what struck me was how resourceful mental health nurses are wherever you go. You know, no matter how, how limited resources are, mental health nurses kind of find a creative way to make the best of what they've got to help people. And that kind of really struck me as well. 
That's a lovely sort of almost message to leave things with. But before we go, um, and Nino and Ashley, is there anything you wanted to leave the audience with? Anything you wanted to either recommend people look at or, or aware of before we finish up? Go and have a look on our website, of course, and follow us in Twitter and Facebook. So we will kind of uh, disseminate information about the webinar next autumn. And if you are in Dublin in the ICN APM conference, please come and say hi and come to our workshop. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we would like to see as many as possible. Also, all of those people who are listening to, to, the, to the Malta conference and in the hopefully next months to come. So we hope that the pandemic is not affecting anymore or any other issues so that we can go back to that kind of annual meetings. Yeah, yeah I'd, maybe... I'd just like to kind of uh, agree with Nina, but also to thank you because as an organization um, and to colleagues, Nikki and Metha and David, you know, Mental Health Association United, they've always been extremely supportive of the ratio. They've always always kind of been there from the start and have been there right through they always support us in terms of our social media and in terms of twitter etc so you know there won't be very little going on that isn't been for that you know the momentum can sometimes lag and that's very important so we always feel supported by you and your colleagues and members here so i'd just like to thank you for that too thank you lovely thing to hear isn't it but i think as vanessa was saying and i think as nina was saying it's family isn't it we yeah. all share the same interests and we want things to be better and we we can only do that together can't we so um if you if you are uh watching and listening please do follow on the links um we've really enjoyed having you with us tonight and um, next week just uh, i just had a, a prompt from dave so next week gambling and mental health with bridget martins so that's what we'll be talking about next week but thank you very much for your time today it's been really good lovely job. to have you with us um and only remains for us to say good night good night all good night bye yeah